we are. Here we are live <laughs> once again. Hello to everybody. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a hot minute yes. since we were on last. Um, I guess last time we hung out, it was uh, we had a nice little chat, caught up. It was more casual. It's the new series. Yes. I, uh, butts unbuttoned. Yes. Reese Kimberly. So my little friend Kimberly is <laughs> here joining us again. Um, and I thought, you know, we should do this again. We should do it more often, I think, is, is kind of the fun thing to do. Yes. Um, and just talk and chat and stuff. And so Kimberly suggested after we got off our video last time, it might be a smart idea uh, or a fun idea to do um, men's designers and men's fashion. Yes. Um, and just talk in general about what's happening in men's fashion. Talk fashion. Yeah. No, and that's, that's exciting for me because I, that's, if there's one thing I can do all day. <laughs> Your thing. Talk fashion. So talk fashion to me. And I spent all day today. No, I was work. I was working today, but I yeah. wasn't really working. I was <laughs> watching the runway shows because I haven't. I haven't seen a proper runway show in quite some time. Yeah. Um, and I think most of them these days, most designers these days are kind of doing like an in-house fashion show, mm. um, where they show their collections in-house, so it's not in front of an audience, but it's still done like a fashion show would be. Yeah. Yeah. Really like it is very intimate. Very intimate. Yeah, like the old the old shows used to be. Like I know back in the day, the seventies and eighties, you used to have just a small group of people in media that would come into a room, yeah. and they would show off the collection, and that would be it. And the the, the reporters and the, the publications would then take it and show mass people. Yeah. Um. So it's kind of gone back to that a little bit. But I was spending the whole day. I went on, <laughs> and went through like. Zenia and Brioni and Canali and Brunello. I went through them all and I was like, okay. And it's interesting to see what they're doing with men's fashion. Because a lot of people, a lot of student companies have moved away from suiting. Oh. Like you mentioned the shorts. <laughs> the suit the suit shorts. It's just the image of like a little Prince George and Dress shorts and knee high socks. Yeah. And I don't know, like I just picture men's gangly legs. I don't know why that <laughs> weirds me out. Yeah, like chino shorts or like jean shorts don't weird me out. But right. maybe but, it's just like the length. Wool shorts. Maybe? It's just wool. I think maybe also like where like the button. I don't know. It's just it's just. I don't know. It just it just gives me the heat. <laughs> the right, it just weirds me out. Like I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Prove, nope. me, prove me wrong. Again, as I said before, I mean, prove me wrong. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a fan of the fashion coming out for men's styles because men's styles have all become like 90s grunge where we've gone yes. wide leg. Yes. Not bell bottom, but just like wide from the hip down. Yes. And it's just very pleated or just very large and just flowy. And I know yes. I've tried that in the past with making trousers for myself and making them a lot wider and flowier. And they just feel different. Mm -hmm. Like they don't feel comfortable at all. No. Um, which. And like you're even seeing a lot of more like loose fit shirts with just really like yeah. sloppy oh. collars and like just like I'm already like sweating thinking of the fabric that it's made from and like no. terrible patterns. It's just. So it's, it's, it's not that bad. So in the 90s, they had, um, it was all about a viscose blend, polyester blend fabric. And the shirts were almost like silky. So it wasn't silk, but it was silky to the top. Sorry, I was distracted. <laughs> this guy's like rummaging through the dumpsters, and he's not the typical image of who's rummaging through dumpsters. No, so we've had. I am concerned. Of, like, we're we're calling it shanty town out there right now. There was uh, we had the the parking people in uh, last week, and they unloaded seven pallets. They built a house, so seven pallets big. It was lined with cardboard, and then they had large cardboard over top of it. What? And they were able to manage to fit four dining room chairs in their little <laughs> town. And it's shaded, and there's electricity, and it's just easy for them to, to hang out and, and congregate over What's there. What's he so. looking for? I'm so sorry. I'm just very... He's probably lost something. Keys, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. He's just an average average Joe. Well, and let's let's cheer to fashion. Yeah. Cheers oh, to yeah. Men's fashion. Men's oh, fashion. and we're opening up. Yes! Oh my goodness! Oh, it's, so exciting! Things are happening. <laughs> things are happening. People are out. Uh, People oh, are ready to get rid of the masks. Did oh you ever God. see that Trident commercial? Was it a gum commercial? No. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you when we're off camera. It's, <laughs> it's all about like people getting out of their house and seeing sunlight for like the first time ever and they're all in like their pajamas and they're running out into a park and they're making out with each other and they're just like <laughs> just like getting out and being <laughs> social again. It's it's so on point for a commercial that it just 
They should be applauded, whoever did the marketing it. for that. Well, last night, um, I drove down to Auburn Bay, going to visit my cousin, yeah. and we had a little patio situation, because that's allowed. Um, and there's this huge billboard as you're coming off the highway, going into Auburn Bay, and it's some guy who's, like, running for mayor or whatever, so he's totally capitalized on this. <laughs> and it's, like, on the top, it says, congratulations, you've done it. And then there's a side banner that says, all restrictions off July 1st. And I was like, what is this? And I'm telling my cousin, she's like, you're lying. I'm like, no, like, there's a billboard. And he's like, good job. Like, congratulations. <laughs> like, I don't know. I I have a lot of my own opinions about all of that. And I don't know. Like, I've been cool through all this. Like, you know, working in public. Like, I, you know, I'm right. with people every day. I'm wearing my mask. I'm comfortable. Everything's going on. But I'm kind of like, I'm okay to still keep wearing it for a little bit. Right. I don't know. Like I'm. Well, I know some. I'm easing. It's just I, I like the ease of things. Okay. You know, like how we could go to a patio, right. which is cool, and then they're like, then you can go inside. Everything's just evolving and easing, but they're like, no. Nope. It's very abrupt. It's like all of a sudden, it's like you have a million cases, and things are dire to like you're exactly. an amber zone internationally, like and like two weeks later, like. Hmm. Yeah. Like we're literally like, the no worst worries. in the country. And we're like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> like Tom was like, you know what? It's July first. I'm gonna fuck off. Like, I don't know. That's just, so I don't know. And then my mom calls me crying the other day. She's like, I'm worried about you. Like, be safe. I'm like, what do you think I'm doing? I'm like running around licking doorknobs. Like, I'm still doing everything that I was doing before. Like, I can't control it. Like, well, I know some companies know. are gonna wait next year. Oh yeah, almost with, definitely. With, like, the with our yeah. company, like yeah. being a national company, like they've already flat out said, like we will follow the national yeah. guideline. And I get that. You know, it's just all gonna be adjusting and. You know, it'll be what it'll be, and you can't control it. It's just, I don't know. Yeah. What do you guys see in terms of fashion coming into the, the, the stores? Oh my God, color is everywhere. Like bold, vibrant colors, and is I it love solid it. color though. Or is it block printed colors? No, it's just solid. Just color. solid. <laughs> just solid everywhere. And then I'm there, I'm like working, like all black, all black. I'm like, <laughs> I see color. You know, it's like on my day off, I'm like, oh, I wear a green dress, and I felt like wild. Yeah. Right. And like my friend's like, oh my God, you're wearing green. Like that's. You know what? I've had I've had a couple people in this week have, that have mentioned that they really love wearing green, and I was like, oh, I love green. Do I just never notice people wearing green? It's it, you know, a lot green. Of, a lot of people say they wear it all the time, and I'm like, I'm looking at them going, I hardly ever, I, I hardly ever notice people wearing green. I feel like it's definitely the seasonal color. Really? Like I've got some like forest greens that I wear in the winter time. Like I feel like that's more yeah, of like yeah. a warmer, cozy color, but. Um, but like a leafy green for spring summer. Well, like I have one that I wear that's a really nice kind of like silky fabric, just a very flowy, easy. Like that's my thing. Like I'm, you'll never see me wearing like just shorts and a t-shirt. Like I'm not a comfortable person where if I'm like, oh, I'll just throw on like jean shorts and a top or whatever. Like that's not me. Right. So I'll just throw on a sundress, and people will be like, oh, like you're showing off. Like yesterday, my cousin was like, oh, you just threw that together. I'm like. Yeah, I did. Like, it literally was just, like, a leopard print sundress and my Birkin socks. Like, I put it on and I walked out of the house. Like, and that's what I'm comfortable in and that's right. what suits me. And, you know, you got to go with that. Whereas, like, why am I going to try and look casual? Like, I don't know. I don't feel like I look uncasual. But, right. you no, know, it's just this really gorgeous, like, it's like, a, it's like a light forest green. I don't even know what shade it is. But it's really nice. It's got little tiny white polka dots, so it softens it a bit more. Sure. And it's just a little flowy. It's got little cap sleeve and like a little like lace detail and it's just easy to wear that's what i go for it's just that easy like it's that effortless it's sprezzatura sprezzatura yeah yes oh my gosh no it's casual to wear exactly and that's i mean i see that in a lot of the fashions coming in but i think sometimes it's exaggerated a little bit too much right well with men's fashion it's all just about like the baggy like going back to like just the baggy shirt yeah and just doing the the oversized oversized it's that Slinky, silky, viscose fabric. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. you know, you can wear a white beater underneath and then like an open dress shirt. Yeah. Whatever. It's, yeah, it's that's kind of the look they're going in. And Hectic like, prints, though. I've seen a lot of prints. Prints? Oh my like, God. Like Hawaiian prints, like that whole floral, like it's. That, it's a look. Tommy Bahama. I mean, if you're not capitalizing on this, you're. <laughs> I know. Like, guys are like, well, oh, like this shirt. And you're like, that's a dad shirt. Dad shirts. That's what it is. Dad, dad shirts look. are bad. Yeah. Well, no, I was even looking at Tom Ford. I mean, Okay, so here's my two thoughts on Tom Ford. Not that you asked. <laughs> uh, I've always been a fan of his silhouette, yeah. but I feel as though the last several years he's gone just too far to one side where you're like, no, nah, you're not really ahead of the curve. Yeah. But with the styles coming in now, his prints and his silhouettes make sense where they're just kind of like wide lapels, 
really tiny at the waist and like flared or wide. Yeah. I'm being flared my face. I, I, I know. <laughs> even for know. women, like, I can't. Like, no, flared, I can't. Anybody, Maybe just because I'm five foot, so I've never been able to have a flared situation in my life. But it even, just, oh, it even, just makes me Even the mom jeans, I can't know they're coming in. No. They're just, no. that's a hard sell. No. That's a hard sell. That's like you, you've given up. You're coming out of COVID, and you're, you've given up, but you haven't given up like, quite yet. With mom jeans, it's like, why are you going to pull them so high that you're like, it gives you a gut. Like, it gives right. you the fanny pack. And then you're like, hey, how do we make our butts look more like pancakes and just, like, elongate and spread it out? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's I the thing, because it comes up so high, that waistline, it's that just, your tummy just kind of, like, protrudes right through it. It like, makes a... You know, yeah, why? Why I, do it? No. Same thing with men's trousers. No. Like, no, we don't... It, it's nice to see a men's slim leg, a yeah. slim leg on a man. Yeah. Something that's not sloppy, because mm-hmm. it can get so sloppy so fast yeah. with men's wear. Right? It's just neat. It's clean. It's just a clean line. It's just, it works. And you're done. Like, it, again, yeah. it's what we've talked about how many times before. It just takes the guesswork of what you're doing. Yeah. You can wear it to work. You can wear it to and dinner then afterwards. And men's shoes are getting chunky again. Chunky shoes. I can't <gasps> tell you. Oh, my God. I saw a lady yesterday. <laughs> oh, my God. Ass. No. Okay. <laughs> 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 This woman. This is why Kimberly and I are friends. That gasp is just like <laughs> this what woman makes was me wearing smile. Platform with like an actual heel, or like a rainbow tie dye croc, and they were the most offensive things I've ever seen. And this woman, I know who she is, and she is like <laughs> I know, she I know is who she is. Basically, as tall as you. She's a very big boned woman. Okay. She's just a, she's a she's a presence. Like, okay. you know her when she walks in. And these platforms are, like, this big and then, like, an actual, like, heel part to it. And I was horrified. Like, I actually she's, was, like... She's not a stylist, though, is she? No. Okay. No. Okay. No. Okay. But I'm... Because there's a couple of stylists in town who know. <sighs> Rainbow tie-dyed Crocs with heels and a... Po- and I was so... I was embarrassed Like, is that, like, a, an online thing? <laughs> that... Like, I was, like, if this is what the future is, like, those, like... What was a chunky feet? Fila? 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 Fila. Sneakers. Right, <laughs> I think it's Fila. Fila? Fila? I don't know. Phil? Like, they're, like, <laughs> so chunky and aggressive. Like, there is so much. Right. And you're just seeing shoes being so, like... Like, you just might as well, like, strap, like, cement blocks in your feet yeah. and go out into town. Like, yeah. are we, like, strapping... Yeah. Like, are, is that now our weight loss program? Like, what are we doing? It's pretty atrocious. It's so... Heck, like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I wear children's shoes most of the time, so I don't know. I just... It, I'm going to have to start scour, <laughs> scouring the consignment stores for, like, the all all the stuff that people are getting rid of that they think is no longer in fashion. Oof. So I can at least have some good staples for knitwear or stuff, because it's just it's, struggle town. It's, I feel like it's just going so exaggerated. And then you see yeah. some, like, fabrics, and you see some, like, just what's going on. And I'm like, I wore that when I was, like, a child. Like, I'd buy yeah. that in Northern Getaway. And, like... North... Like, you know that, like, stretchy ribbed, <laughs> and then with, like, the little, like, curvy, like, ruffle all the bottom? <laughs> no! <laughs> and I went out when I was a child, it was a thing, and I'm just seeing, like, like, teenagers and, like, young adults right now wearing that, and I'm just like, it's not, like, it's too soon for it to come back around. Like, what is the actual, I know we studied this, yeah. what is the actual, like, is there a mathematical timeline of, like, when fashions come back in and when styles come back in? Like, yeah. what's the, what is the life cycle? What is the life cycle? Seven seven years is really? when it comes back in. So I say seven years. Seven years, however, fashions in Europe move quicker than fashions yes. in the Americas. Yes. So if we see it in Europe, it'll be a good three to four years before it makes a presence in North America, even with the internet. Yes. So companies won't actually adapt that style because we're just not ready. No. We we move very slowly here well, in North like America. Fast fashion pieces. Um two summers ago, three no. Think about it. Four three, four okay. summers ago. Four many moons ago. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. A few summers ago. I was in Europe for the summer. Okay. And it was hot, you know, had to buy some staple clothes because you just gotta get some new stuff. When you do. Um and I just like went to like H&M or something like that and just bought like a bunch of just like you know just casual easy to wear shirts for a lot of like 40 plus degrees in Athens and I was sweating and having heat stroke and oh, and I remember I was in H&M the other day and I put them through a rack and there's literally the exact same piece 
pizzas that I bought four years ago. Like, they're like new. I'm like, you already own this. Like, what? It's so wild. And they're like, it's in their new section. I'm like, no, I, I literally already own that for four years now. And that's just like fast. That's fast fashion. That's it's, literally it's, like. It's so fast. It's catching up to me. <laughs> all right. Where I'm like, am I, like, what is going on here? So, you know, if you can imagine that versus like the, like an actual like so funny. craft of tailoring and like fast, proper fashion, like bespoke yeah. fashion and actual like designers in that whole world, like yeah. we are really behind. I don't know. I just, that's, anyway. Well, I mean, the whole thing, <laughs> uh, they have a petit uomo, um, I think in Italy, um, and it's Instagram quite a bit and it's just basically like men's fashion and it's, yeah. it's all about like custom made pieces and men on the streets looking amazing yeah. like it's it's custom fit. so the pants are all very over the top elaborate the waistbands are different the buckles are different the buttons are different the men are a lot more um casual and yet put together yeah um and it, it goes away from fast fashion but it's still kind of very fashionable yeah um which is super interesting um and to follow some of these guys i know i've been invited to some of the trunk shows for like textile development um and haven't gone to any of those yet um in the major city centers like i know milan does a big one and florence also does a big one i love florence favorite city in italy for sure mm -hmm. um so i mean on my bucket list of things to get to um i will certainly need to plan for a wardrobe for that because you just don't show up to one of those things you, i mean you do have to <laughs> you don't just show up you don't just show you're up you're like roaming the streets and be like you know what i'm gonna do yeah. We're gonna pop over there after, we, right. see, after we see David. Pop, we're gonna pop, pop a over here. Pop a Canadian patch on. They'll understand completely. <laughs> <laughs> you're like this sweating tourist. You're like just popped off some, you know, some prosecco, some pizza. <laughs> that's right. and well, and that's what they walk around. They have a little baguette of something and a, a bottle of wine. Just like, hey. <laughs> it was my favorite thing. Like, you know, those like little like baby bottles of prosecco. No, I've never had one. But you know what I'm talking about. I know like, what you're talking about. Like, yeah. serving. So when I was in Europe, like it was cheaper to buy one of those than a bottle of water. Sure. So I just pop into the store and I'd be like walking down the street like drinking Prosecco like it was water. I we, had a very great time in Europe for I was summer. having I was having a chat with so a group of, of people I went to a group of people I went to Europe with after we finished college. Mm -hmm. Um so Kimberly was a year below me um in college. Um but we I graduated in oh eight and oh nine, so I took an advanced course. But no oh eight uh, a bunch of us graduated and it was like 12 years ago and so one of the girls got onto a chat and she's like hey guys like group powwow like how how crazy was this trip and back to the Prosecco thing there were pictures that were brought up I was I I don't I don't remember <laughs> Florence very well <laughs> and these pictures would completely explain why but it was just like we had like one of the best trips yeah it was crazy but yeah no I mean, four dollar bottles of wine, and oh, they, yeah. were, they were perfectly fine to a reasonable palate. Yeah, yeah you're good. Yeah, I remember there was, oh my god, there was this one pizza restaurant, pizza like pizza pizzeria, pizza pizzeria, pizza, pizza, pizzeria in yeah. Venice. Um, and I actually ha I've been there twice. It's my favorite pizza. So the second time I was there, I was like, I don't know the name of it, I don't know what street it's on, but I know what it looks like, so I'm gonna find it. And I found it. Okay. And ironically enough, I sat in the exact same seat. Okay. And this was. A year and a half apart so I sat in the same seat and I wore the same thing and I'm like have this really cute photo like the same pose like the same food same drink all that and remember it was a dollar it was one euro fifty for a full glass of Prosecco or it was like two euros for a bottle of water and I was like Prosecco <laughs> why not right why not yeah it's great I love it yeah. I just love Prosecco like it's yeah. fast fashion yeah. fast and fashion no, but it's neat. Like, you know, when you're... But the I mean, shows, I mean, the shows in Europe, you just get to see how men can really dress. Yeah. Because it's so different than here. Like, here it's very... I mean, Montreal is an exception to the rule. Because yes. in Montreal, they do wear more color and more pattern and they're more outgoing. Yeah. Everywhere else in Canada, it's just like... You play it safe. Like, even your shirt right now, to me, that's such an effortlessly easy shirt to wear right but it's just that color even maybe being such a like, a, like even just a stripe yeah there'd be a lot of men who'd be like oh i don't know are you sure i could do it like right and i don't know why there's is it a lack of confidence is it 
Are they worried someone's going to say something? Like, what is it, like, from a male perspective? Like, what what holds people back from expressing themselves? Because for a female... I think it, it goes against the norm. Like, I, when I was thinking about this today in the shower, because that's where I do my <laughs> best thinking. Yeah. Um, when I worked in the offices downtown, I would often dress up, even though I wasn't... I didn't have... I mean, I wasn't a senior of any sort working downtown, but... You'd often have people stop you and just say, hey, like, are you, are you going to a job interview today? Or, like, what's your deal for dressing up? Like, why? <laughs> why do you and look you're nice? Like, well, I felt good, so yeah. I thought I'd look good as well. Like, why, why would I want to come to work looking like a slob? Like, yeah. that doesn't make me feel good. Um, and I think men in Europe often express themselves more through their clothing. Would you say it has that connection of, like, an emotional side to it? Because I know, like, mm. European men are, you know, you see that there is much more of that, that romance, there's that affection, there's that emotional intelligence that just as a, as a whole European people, generally, generally, just very generally speaking, I right. feel like, you know, there is that, that, that love of life, you know, they, they, they work to live, not live to work, like, it's a very different mindset, so do you think fashion mm. translates in that as well, just that? That emotional side. It's hard because people in Russia also dress up quite well. Like they're very put together in Russia, yeah. and they're also very put together in like places like Croatia and Ukraine. Um, but then that's Mexico very serious at all. Right, and Mexico is also men do dress yeah. up. So yeah. I don't I don't know what the Americas. I don't know what our problem is. In terms of like wearing fashion, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know what our problem is because it's just like this. For like, I ordered this shirt in, yeah, and I thought I would get a bolder stripe. Like I really wanted like a circus stripe, like a wide yeah. striped shirt, and I didn't go bold enough in it. So I mean, the next one I'll order. Yeah. Luckily for this fabric, if you didn't know about this fabric, it is reversible. Yes, I can see that right now. I'm I'm seeing on the cuff. Yeah. But even on the on, on the inside on your collar, I can see yeah. a different color on the inside. So it's brown on well, it's a reddish brown on the inside and a pink on the outside. Yeah. And so it comes in four colorways, and it's reversed on each colorway kind of thing. Like so that. a blue will be an orange on the inside. The yellow, I think, is more of a reddish tone. The pink has a brown. So it's just it's reversed, which is quite interesting. But I really wanted something that was wider striped because the Italians right now all over Instagram are just wearing wide striped shirts and i think it looks so good that was an emerald green wide striped shirt okay Ooh. yeah see and green's hard to come by i know i'm just i'm a green, green. anything yeah I no love i green. i love green and i try to stay away from the blue so i think next it'll be a red and a pink wide stripe is what i'll do in terms of like a really bold stripe because it looks good like it looks really good why do you stay away from blues I stay away from blues because it's so typical to have a blue shirt. A blue like there's nothing wrong with a white shirt. I love a good white shirt, and especially if it has a crisp a white, a crisp a crisp white, and then pattern. So with my dress shirts, whenever I have a white dress shirt, the collars and the cuffs will be solid white, and then the body of the shirt will have some sort of different weave to it. Whether it's a diamond shape, whether it's a honeycomb shape, it'll have something to it where it's just a little bit different. So that, Herringbone. I love herringbone. Yeah, the That's... herringbone stripes are also really interesting. Um, but I want, I don't want gingham. I'm so tired of gingham. Mm -hmm. Like, I, it's such a country, stampede kind of look, and yeah. every guy has it. So women love to buy gingham for men, because it's like the only pattern they will do. Yeah. Um, if, they, if they're not adventurous, they'll do a gingham for some reason, because it's busy, <laughs> but it's, it's safe at the same yeah. time. So it's blue. And purple or pink and red. Like, they'll just kind of mix them together. Or or there's a purple and blue one, too, that's quite common. But it's just so... No. With a pair of, you know, Dockers or Chinos or whatever, Eddie Bauer or whatever. I don't know how... <laughs> where, like, where do you guys get these things from? Just like... From Dockers. From Eddie Bauer. Right? But it's just from like... That's insane. It's like every man downtown who doesn't have to dress up in a suit is always wearing Dockers. You know what, though? I do like, love... I do love a good Chino. I but prefer Dockers, chinos though. on a Where man. Where did Dockers go? Like, <laughs> it's, that's what I'm saying. There's a whole, we've got a whole Dockers department. No, I prefer chinos um, than jeans on a man. Right. Absolutely. I don't know. I just it's just it's just that fine line of that that 
but like casual, a, but you're still like trying. I don't know. But I'm a well tailored s- pair of chinos, though. Yes. Because there's a difference between yes. like a, just a wide, regular chino and something that's tailored yes. to you. There's a difference. Yeah. In chino, in terms of how that comes off as presentable, and then pairing it with like a loafer or yeah. a driving shoe mm-hmm. or a monk strap shoe, exactly. something that just elevates that look. So you're not yeah. wearing the Nike Dad sneaker with no. chinos. And a gingham shirt, yeah. you know? You know, and then also balancing, like, if you do have your belt, or, you know, it's, it's just those little touches to it that really tie it together of, right. of that full package. I mean, if you show up in a really nice, like, well-fitting pair of chinos and a pair of Sperry's, like, I'm, I'm yours. Like, if that's just, that's my, that's my love language. Right. <laughs> like, we were talking about that at work the other day, and, like, I was like... A love language. I'm like, girls, I'm like, my love language is cheese fondue. And one of them was like, are you serious? I was like, no, I'm totally messing with you. That's not one of them, but... That's not the joke being like, you know, it's just how, you know, what, what's your classic, what's your, you know, effortless look or whatever, right. and it's just different styles, you know, and you're able to take something like a very well-tailored pair of chinos and make it either a bit more dressy with the monk strap or a bit more casual with your spares. Like, it's right. you know, that whole balance of it. Yeah, which I think the French do really well in terms of, like, yes. mixing and matching yeah. and pairing and, and you know. The French are not afraid to wear scarves. Yeah. In Calgary and in Canada, for the most part, we're not scarf people. Yes. Scarves need to come back. Right. They need to come back strong. Because it's a great like it. way, if you don't, if a man doesn't like, if you don't wear a lot of color, if you're very much like, I like my blue pants, yeah. like my white shirt, great, wrap a scarf around your neck. Yes. Ooh, and it's like bright red. Yeah. Like, okay. and it's, just, it's so easy. And like, yeah. It keeps your neck from being sunburnt if you're if you want to be utilitarian about yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's a very like sheep mentality where it's you know that herd thing where being like you know as a whole you know we're a very safe country when it comes to men's fashion so people are just like this is what everybody does let's yeah. just keep doing this because that's what we see you know and you gotta yeah. be bold break yeah. out of the mold like what's the worst that's gonna happen someone's gonna be like huh right like or someone like nobody's gonna come up to you and be like you look stupid right. Because you're trying something different, or you're like, although I <laughs> well, we might say you're I, stupid, I, no, but... I won't. I won't. Uh, <laughs> my sister was once in the bathroom, um, cramping herself, and she had a, a coworker at the time walk in, and my, it was like summer, um, and I guess the weather was may have not been the greatest that day or something, and she was wearing an all white dress, and mm-hmm. the woman came and she goes, oh, that's really bold of you and like went to the stall and did whatever and my sister was like um I'm not sure if you were just trying to like knock me down or like what your problem is but like and I've had people go oh like you're dressed really well like why or that's the best when someone's like confused and they're they're like personally victimized that you look better than them right exactly like literally yeah she was my cousin where she was like oh you just threw that together and I was like are you mad that I just put on a dress that right. I look good? But I don't know. Like, stop, well, sorry, you're looking good. I had, a woman, I had a woman in the other day, and we were tailoring some things, and we were having this chat about people commenting that she's always dressed up. She goes, "That's just how I am." Not really. Yeah. Like, like that's the thing. That's like what you consider casual or whatnot. Well, her pieces are tailored, so they're they're made to fit her. Yeah. Um, because that's the way I make them. So she instantly already looks better. So she instantly already looks better, but it doesn't take much effort. No. To put on a good pair of pants, a nice flowy top that fits you, yeah. belt it or something. I, I don't know what women are doing these days, but, you know, belt it. Throw on a kitten heel if you must. Yeah. Like, get away from your flats, get away from your running shoes. Like, if you wear those pants every day, maybe not wear them out to a social event, you yeah. know, break out of the mold a little bit. Exactly. Like, it's just, yeah. I mean, definitely, I've had many occasions where people question they're like oh like you're so dressed up or whatnot I'm like this is this is my casual like this is me yeah. just feeling good at what I'm wearing and just doing it yeah I remember losing my brother one time oh no with his friends and his friends were so my brother is a gamer and his friends are also gamers and they live in the world of like here's my basement suite and this is my computer and I will sit here all day and so I, years ago, we were moving my brother out of something, and we had a moving truck. And I had on Ferragamo loafers with some chinos. Because <laughs> it was the most <laughs> dressed down I could be, but they were just, they were just regular walking driving yeah, shoes kind exactly. of thing. Yeah, exactly. And, and we got, we finished, you know, 
setting things up in the storage bin, and his friends go, you know, oh, like, you dressed up for this. And I was like, no, guys, like, this is how I normally yeah. look. Yeah, like, right. we could maybe, like, I get that we're moving, but we didn't really have to move much. Yeah. And You're like, I just put these on know. to leave the house to go out into the world. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you naturally have it in your closet, it's not hard no. to look good. Yeah. But if you have those defaults of just like, oh, here are my my shorts to cut the grass and my shirt and I'm going to go out and pick yeah. up groceries with that. It's like, of course, you're not going to feel good because you look like a mess. Like, that's just the way it is. So I think there's clothing for every every situation. Yeah. And I know a lot of people are coming out of COVID and they're just like, they don't want to look frumpy anymore, I guess. Yeah. Or go into the world and seem like they've been doing nothing. They want to put on a face of like, oh, no, I still look good. Yeah. Um, look at all the new things I purchased. Yeah, but that's the thing as well. You know, coming out of all of this, and you know, maybe some people are coming back to the office, you know, or, you know, reuniting with friends and family and going out there. You really have to adjust, and, you know, that's where it really comes back into tailoring and having something that fits you, where maybe you think, like, I know I've been in a scenario where, I, you know, I'll go into the store and be like, this is my size. And then I'm like, oh, no, it doesn't fit the way that I want it to. I need to adjust myself to fit that. Right. And that's such a bad mentality. That's not how it should be. You're right. not you're not supposed to fit a clothes. The clothes is supposed to fit you. <laughs> <laughs> no, <what? laughs> wow, we're the we're the bring that back in for the No, but it, it's, it's very true. accurate. Like, like no, no, if, you've got to adjust it, right? We're not every I'm I'm in awkward shape. We've talked right. about this before. Yeah. And I'm a five foot one busty woman. <laughs> like it's awkward. Like nothing I'm I have to, you know, bring in like I dress shirts. I have to get French please put in like because it's never gonna fit me well and there's a psychology that goes into that too so um here at stuff um <laughs> the shop the shop we're in the back of um <laughs> back room there's there's a lot of um a lot of guys that come in and they're fitting in larger sizes now and there's there's a mentality that some retailers will take where they will actually size down their clothing for a collection to get you to buy larger clothing yeah only to next season put it back to a regular sizing so that you feel like you've lost weight and that you need to buy regular fitting clothing again and you're back down to where you should be. Yeah. So there's a lot of psychology that goes into it too. So the guys come into the shop um, and by no means they're just like, oh, like I've gained a little bit of weight and instead of large, I'm a double extra large now. Yeah. So they'll buy double extra larges and then in the next season they have to be like, oh, I'm back to a large again. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's such a farce. Like, you know, you see the photos where people will lay out, say, six pairs of jeans that are all the same size, right? But they're like six different companies, and it is dramatically different. Like, For you women, can't, it's hard. You can't like, and that's the thing where you know, and you have to remember, it's you need to adjust it to fit you, and yeah. that's where having a tailor, having you know those adjustments come into play, where you know you've got to adjust yourself. Right. Like when we go to Packwood. There's no way that I'm going to be able to buy a dress right off the rack that maybe that won't need hemming, won't need maybe the strap tightened a little bit to pull everything in. Like, right. it's just how it is. Yeah. No, and it, I mean, no one's the perfect size. You're no. always going to need some sort of tweaking done. Like, that's, yeah. it's so important just to look at your clothes and go, okay, like, what, what needs to be adjusted? What's offensive here? Yeah. And what needs to be corrected? Yeah. And I say offensive. Offensive is a way for me just to be like, does anything look wrong to yeah. you? Like I, yeah. use, I like to use the word offensive because it's just like yeah, it's not being it, derogatory. No, it's it's, it's, it's it's a red flag for people. Like yeah. okay, well maybe my pant leg is quite long yeah. because men love a long pant leg in Calgary. Yeah, it just drives me nuts. Yeah, and but, even from like a female perspective of where a dress hits you, where that can honestly like if it hits at a certain point on your calf, yeah. that could be the difference between you feeling and looking like you've got like friggin' wide calf. I'm, I hate my calves. Or too mature. I hate my calves. And I made a comment one time when I was at my physio, something about like having like really chunky calves. And he was offended at me. He was like, are you, like, are you joking? He's like, you have like, you've got built legs. Like people would, people train for years to have like the muscle in your leg. And I was like, I don't like them. And right. that brings it back to if I'm not having the right hem length, if I'm not having it sit where it needs to sit and I'm not having the right shoe, I'm not having those right proportions. And it's all an optical illusion. It's all just that little bit of an adjustment right. can make all the difference of how you look at yourself, how you feel, how your body looks to other people. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, it's, it's, back going, back it's, it's <laughs> going back to the perception of how you'd like to be seen, yes. how you see yourself, and how others see you. Yes. Um, there's a whole theory behind oh it that gosh, they yeah. teach you in fashion school yep. about the psychology the, of fashion. <laughs> the psychology yeah. of that was actually one of my favorite classes. It was a good class. Remember when we used to have to go and follow people around the mall and like stalk their shopping trends? Shopping habits? Yes, and like what racks they went to first and how they would walk and what they would touch. The traffic flow. Oh my god, I love or... it. We'd like hide in the corners and like write a note. Well, even, even so, <laughs> yeah, just the psychology of shopping, period. Yes. Men yeah. go into a store one way and women go into a store the other way. Yeah, and how you how you track through and, yeah. and you know, for female versus male, where you put the clearance or the sales rack. Important, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all of it. Down to the way the malls are built. Oh my gosh, um, I love that when we'd be like, oh, let's just do that again. Like, I just, I love it. The runway. I always remember the racetrack because I... We have Chinook Mall here in Calgary, and it is built like a racetrack. Yeah. You have the lower level that's an oval, and the upper level it's a oval, an oval, and it keeps you walking and viewing the whole mall. So you'll actually run it like a racetrack. Well, even now with the arrows on the floor telling you which way to go, which is well, hilarious. They did that in grocery stores for a long time. So in the Netherlands and parts of Europe, yeah, they would actually build shopping carts. And they would say, oh, your vegetables would go really well here. Ooh. And so they would tell you, they would prompt you to be like, oh, maybe you should be in the vegetable aisle. And then <laughs> maybe they, you should get some veggies. And then they would, <laughs> and then they would say like, there'd be a part where it'd be like, oh, you're like, your meats should all fit here. And it would kind of tell you like portion wise, yeah. how much meat you should be putting in with every meal of like vegetables. Like it would just be prompting Why you. Why do I live in Europe? Like, I don't know. Like, they just, it's so they on point. They get it. They, they do. get it. Yeah. I mean, even for, like, totally off topic, but, like, when you're in Scandinavia, so in Finland, yeah, they're so, like, chill and welcoming and everything's great. Like, they leave, they leave babies in strollers on the sidewalk. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like just if like I, a dog. Just like, like a dog. Like, if I'm a mom tie up. with my baby in my stroller and I've got to run into the bakery, grab a couple loaves of bread, I will just park my stroller on the sidewalk and I will go inside the babies I remember I walked by and I was like um I was in Denmark for that because it's a whole like culture there in Scandinavia and I was in Denmark and like when we came off our cruise ship there was this big billboard you know explaining different cultural things of you know like a, a everything that goes on there and there was actually a disclaimer in a picture where it said like if you see a baby in a stroller like it's okay they literally on, at the cruise ship terminal they were like it is cool and like <laughs> so off track. Like, if you're panicked, don't be. <laughs> no, and I saw it and I was like, you just leave your baby in the stroller on the sidewalk. But yeah, and it's that's it's just the culture of community, the culture of looking out for people. It's right. the culture of, you know, getting together for coffee and relaxing and then the socializing. Like it's all a whole yeah. encompassing world there. But Well and the fashion must be interesting because I I understand from people I've talked to while traveling yes. that people in Russia will actually go to Finland. Oh, I love Scandinavia is fantastic. And uh, purchase their fashion there to go back very, to, very to go cool. back to Russia. Very like, smart. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Very, very smart. Um, and it's interesting because like when I was there, it was there in the summertime and it it shouldn't have been we I was there in a heat wave and the stores and restaurants and hotels, they were like, Well, it's supposed to be cold right now, so we'll keep <gasps> the heat running. Where it was like, <laughs> it was a heat wave outside. They were watering sidewalks. Literally, <laughs> in Latvia, there was like a sprinkler, like one of those like sprinklers that like goes, you know, the lawn sprinklers. Yeah. They were just watering sidewalks, and there's people out there just watering sidewalks just to like to keep the heat down. Yes, to like cool down from the. But then you walk into a shop, and it's like blasting with heat. It was outright, and I was like, just turn it off. <laughs> like, turn off your heat. And they're like, we can't. Like, it's programmed. It's supposed to be a bit chilly right now. Like, a hotel, I stayed in Stockholm overnight, and I stayed at a Best Western. Sure. Because I had a lot of luggage. I was with another person. And I know Scandinavia, I assume that the hotels there would be very tiny, like micro right. hotels. Yeah. So I was like, let's go with the Best Western because it's more of a North American chain. chain. Maybe it'll be a bit spacious. No. Friggin' tiny. Yeah. Um, went to open the window, and the window opened to the atrium that was inside that was covered. So, <laughs> call the front desk, and I was like, hey, do you have a fan? Like, it's boiling hot. And he's like, I'm sorry, a what? And I'm like, a fan. Like, 
to move air around. So I'm trying to explain to this man what a fan is. He's like, no. <laughs> so I... <laughs> For like 20 minutes of describing something, you're like, uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I turned on the shower, the coldest. Okay. And I left the shower running with the door to the bathroom open all night while I slept to try and like cool off oh. the room. <laughs> Their it's... water bill, I can't even. <laughs> but that no, it's outrageous. So it's so good. Just a like, um. They're like, Canadian who wanted a fan. Like, <laughs> who is she? That's right. So, no, but so we didn't give her a fan, but she ended up turning <laughs> on the cold water for 18 hours. <laughs> no, but like, honestly, though, like, fashion. Fashion in Scandinavia, like they're very, they love a slim fit. I'll tell you that they are, Ooh. they are a slim like. <laughs> well, they're a slim people. They're as very it is. slim people, very tall, very slim people. Like you could be there. Like Calvin, you are, you almost look Scandinavian. Like you should be a Scandinavian. I wish. Sorry, you, I'm just you, looking at messages. You've got a little bit of a Viking vibe happening right now. Do I? And you are slimming out. Uh, I I am trying to slim out very hard. You are Um, slimming. I am trying, but I am not. I I refuse to do cool sculpting. Um, That's about my tax bracket right now. (laughs) Yeah, right? They're like, oh, so so (laughs) cool sculpting, from what I understand, from what I've been told, um, they were doing um, research on kids who got their tonsils out, and they realized that the kids would have to suck on popsicles all the time to, like, keep them happy. And they realized that the fat wouldn't build up the same way that it did. And that's where cool sculpting came from. Was was the idea of just sticking ice packs to your body (laughs) for periods of time where the fat would just not regrow. And you're like, okay, well. Yeah, but electrocuting your body with ice packets. Yeah. It's aggressive. So so I had a a friend who went to a consultation one time. She's like, so what's the difference between that and just sticking some ice packs and being in the tub? Like, why? I can go to Mexico and get my kidney cut out and be in the tub full of ice for three days and... Well, the other week, the heat wave that we had the other week. And it's coming this week, too. I'm pumped, pumped. I woke up. Okay, so I got home from work. I was so, you know those days where it's just so warm and you're just drained. So I took a nap, like at like 5 o'clock in the evening, which is stupid. And I woke up at 10 o'clock and I was just disgusting. So I literally laid in my bathtub and I turned it on the coldest possible. And I just laid and I had like a cold bath. And I was like, (gasps) like I couldn't breathe, but I needed it. And that's. See, I that's, could have cold sculpted myself. That's like, where Kimberly and I differ. <laughs> I got my second shot yesterday. Well, everyone's like, well, why don't you take a cold shower? And I'm like, because yeah. I wanted to lay. Because I was like, maybe I'm pretending I'm in a pool in Mexico. Like, that's where I went. <laughs> maybe I want to be a little more romantic with maybe my dreams. I just want to feel like I'm somewhere. Yeah. Different. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I got into the whole thing of making cold tea. Like I, oh, yes. so Starbucks used to have at one point, it was, um, green tea in a bottle yes. and it was like $5. Okay. I've never it seen it in a outrageous. bottle. You keep okay. talking about a bottle. I've never seen the green tea in a bottle. They had two flavors. One was a green tea and there was, I think maybe a lemon one. Or something. I don't remember it, but it was sweet and it was green tea. And I know that they have, so stash, you can get stash stuff at Safeway now. Oh. And I've learned. That if you make tea from the stash stuff, it's a Mediterranean um, green leaf mint peppermint thing mix. I don't know. Yeah. I find that if you put that into, like, I make a whole tub of it. I make, yeah. I go all out and I make a whole two liter. Um, and I put in um, a dash, and by dash, I mean a lot of honey. Um, I you saying vodka. <laughs> <laughs> a dash of vodka. Um, it tastes identical. Well, and I. Just, Put it in the fridge and yeah. call it a day. Yeah, it's so good. Like, so good. You no, know, because like I used to always get from Starbucks, and I still think Starbucks still does it, where it's a green tea lemonade with a shake mm. over ice. But like I chug that back, like yeah. water. So I'll make that at and home. all ice, so you basically drink nothing. No, I ask for like <laughs> half ice. I'm that person. Um, no, but I'll brew, like, and I'll do, like, a big thing um, of green tea. And I actually bought from Ikea, like, the big glass jars with little, like, Spout lids to it. Yeah, yeah. I've been going like in plastics at home. I've tried. I've gotten all plastic as much as I can eliminated. So I have like glass jars and like like glass bottles in the fridge that I have like the teas and whatnot in. Right. Um, yeah, I'll just mix it up and it's just so refreshing. Yeah. You know, and it's just a nice it's different than it's just good. your regular Gatorades or yeah. sweet drinks or whatever it is you're drinking. And like Tetley came out with a whole line of teas that have. Yeah. Tetley. Tetley. If we're going down that one. No, but they have like, <laughs> you know, they have like extra ones where they have like extra zinc or extra like vitamins or whatnot oh. in it. So it's like immunity boosting teas. So okay. I'll do those cold. There's like a tropical one. Um, there's like a, a peach 
something something and they're good you know they're just a nice and then just dash of honey in and you're just good to go so my cousin's um daughter did went to uh an ivy league school and they were supposed to do a business presentation on creating a new a new thing for the market much like we did yes i don't know did you do that project me me and stacy did our project our project was really good though and it kind of came to fruition but didn't and i'll tell you here in a second um, but she, my cousin's kid, did it on, um, like, the Keurig um, coffees. Yes. But they had built-in proteins. Like, you'd Ooh. put, like, instead of making a protein shake, you'd, like, it would be mixed in with the pod. Ooh, I like How that. How freaking smart is that? Yeah. That's, like, a story. No, Stacy and I had the idea of doing, it was, like, uh, for Visa, the Visa card, but it was yeah. called Visa X. And what would happen was you would go online and put in all of your loyalty cards. So that whenever you were at a terminal and you swiped your visa card it would automatically apply all of the points to wherever system you were in and i know they have wallets and stuff now and this was yeah, several years funny. ago but this would be just so so visa if you're listening um seven percent royalties yeah. we can talk um and i'm here to just yeah you're, you're like I'll, I'll take two, two. <laughs> Um, but it would be such a carefree way of just be like swipe yeah it applies all of your point systems there's nothing worse than like being somewhere and then you're like are you okay i'll take three points and then they're like a little too i don't know it's weird i just don't like like i have my air miles is the only thing i have and it's just like beep boop you know on your phone but you have to go the extra way to like pull up the app and like get out your card and rather than just swiping and going right so the slogan was like Visa X, just sign here. Because you know how you sign on the X. Back in the day when you have to actually sign this things, guy. it was signing on the X. We were brilliant at it. Yeah. But no, it was a good time. Yeah. But yeah. So I mean, going back to men's fashion. Men's fashion. You know, now that we've digressed. Yeah. Um, what, do we, what do we got here? Talk, talk to me of your little. Oh, you did I, some research. I, today. I, I see no, you did some I research. I did some research. And no, I just I wanted to go through the things. And I mean. The thing. The thing. <laughs> I wanted to go through all of the collections and just see what they were doing. Because um, I haven't, like, everything's coming back to the 80s and the 80s fashion of that, yes. that wide leg, right? Yes. Everything. And Canali really did their promo. That it, They did a promo and it's trying. Like, they're just <laughs> like, they're trying. trying to be cool. So Canali is typically like your prim and proper conservative man look. Like, yes. it's your blue, white shirts. Your, your suit, and, you know, they'll maybe throw in a couple of sweaters and a belt, call it a day. Yes. But their new campaign, everyone's going youthful. So here's here's the thing that I've noticed with all of these older companies, like a Xenia, like a Canali, they're all trying to go really super young, and they've used TikTok as an influence yep. to developing their campaign. So everything is shot like a TikTok video would be. I so wish, like, when, when they move... Their outfit changes. God, and the I wish I was. I, I I would love to be that cool. Like I'm not. Like I watched. I watched one yesterday, and this girl was doing these like moves, and then she just like pulled, and it was like next up, and then she's like pull, and I was like, how are you doing this? I don't know. Like, well, and I've even said to some people on Instagram, I'm like, how long does this take you? Like, I get doing it, but yes. like, how much of your day is spent trying to perfectly curate like, t- like the the videos? The exact like. Yeah. Yeah. Or like how you're like. The same person side by side in one outfit, and then you're like together in a room. I don't know. It just and the posing. It's just I a know, big the thing. Posing. I don't know. I don't know. So Canali did their whole video. It was like they went to it like zoomed into like a wall phone that you would just like like the old car phones. You would have to like oh. pick up and dial. Like it was an old eighties. I say old. It was an eighties style. It's, it's a thirty year old. It, it was a, yeah. It was it was a phone that attached to the wall. And this guy would pick it up, and it would be a really young guy. And, of course, mm. they had every ethnicity in it possible to be inclusive. Yep. And they just went through the wide, fashionable styles of the 60s and 70s and the 80s just to really, like, draw it in. And, like, it's a lot for me. Like, they even had, like, the video was shot in, like, a VHS kind of style. And, you're like, it's, it's a little much. It's not, it's trying to draw that line where it's not modern enough, and you're just... You're, it looks like you're trying hard. It's a lot. And it's hard with brands, um, and I won't name it just because I'm a little bit associated with it. But there are brands that are really trying to like grasp a younger demographic, but there are really old brands. They don't have that demographic there quite yet, which is what happened to, to Eaton's. E- so Eaton's went bankrupt. Eaton's, not Eton. Kimberly? Eaton's. Eaton's went bankrupt. Eaton shirts. 
<laughs> we were talking about Eton the first time around. And you were like, what, Etons? I thought that was like some sort of fancy name you were calling Etons. <laughs> <laughs> so e- Eton, actually, the rumor has it in school we learned, we did these case studies, I guess, yeah. um, that Eton's was kind of like the place to go. It was yeah. the place to buy. It was your Sears of the day. You would yeah. go and buy everything there. And they were finding that their demographic was getting older, not buying as much. Mm-hmm. And so they really tried to gear towards a younger demographic, but they didn't really capture the market to do that, and they lost their older market in the process. And so they lost their entire customer base, yeah. basically. Yeah. And that's why they ended up going bankrupt. And a lot of these companies, it's interesting to see them doing the same kind of thing, that mentality of like, okay, we've got all of these older customers that yeah. are VIPs, and they're not buying as much because they're not going out as much. It's the pandemic. They're still buying the high ticket items, but just not making as frequent visits as possible. Yeah. So let's gear towards the younger generation. But the problem is, even though you revamp your website and you work towards like bringing in that younger clientele, they don't know of you or don't want to spend that price point. Like I don't know many twenty-year-olds that are going to go out and buy a three thousand dollars sweater. No two or three of them every season. Like, it's no. just not going to happen. And also that younger clientele, they don't have that loyalty. There's not that... Do you think? I don't think I don't think the younger clientele have a loyalty. I think it's... That's interesting. Whatever, you know, whatever TikTok tells me to buy, whatever so-and-so is wearing, whatever this model, it's... They're very jump on the bandwagon and roll with it. Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> You're like, period. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, we see with, you know... I mean, social media has always helped in a way where it's like, okay, I've seen this on a television show and therefore I'm going to buy it. Yeah. Um, I know a company in in, the, in Vancouver that's across Canada, but in Vancouver, uh, there's a very famous Asian soap opera and they had featured a, a tracksuit from a company um, in a certain color and in Vancouver you couldn't get it. No. Like it was sold out, period. It was being transferred in from all over the world and you yeah. just couldn't get it and so that's where social media is great is that they will influence styles and bring them in where normal people would be like eh yeah. it's okay but when it's on television it's like no yeah you gotta have it that's something i want right and they're gonna want say for example like this hypothetical tracksuit right like if say if another couple stores came out their own version of it that's kind of the same right people are gonna then go and get it wherever they can get it like it's not right. they don't care like yes as much as the label counts it's the look, though. It's the look. You don't look. really see the label. That's right? what I'm noticing with that younger generation is that it's not, you know, we're not seeing brand names splashed across anymore. The, it's, it's gone to the wayside. The name is not there. It's yeah. the it's the fit. It's the silhouette. It's really how it looks. And they're going to get it wherever they can get it. Yeah. Whatever price they can get it. Like, they're going to get it to have it. Yeah. And it's that's, fashion's always been like that, where it's like, okay, here's what the runways are doing. Yeah. How can I get that look cheaper? I always laugh because in fashion school we were to pick up our textbooks were fashion magazines. Like we, <laughs> we really did not have to pay much for our textbooks. Like the poor medical students paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for textbooks, and we're like eight ninety nine for Vogue. <laughs> yeah, right. And like, you? <laughs> and we're all like hoarded in like the common areas and res oh, trading off magazines, cutting out pictures that were relevant. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> <laughs> opportunity to go to fashion week that i can volunteer my time there for free oh okay yeah, sure that take sounds my like hours yeah, it's <laughs> unbelievable but just like no that trickle down thing of like i always laugh because it was the magazines were always like oh the celebrity is wearing this look get it for cheaper and then the magazine would always like pick this horrendous outfit that wouldn't even resemble <laughs> no. the celebrity outfit right. you're like okay well that I Someone didn't do enough of research to <laughs> pull something side by somewhat. side. <laughs> this look for less, and you're like, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> yeah, but I was thinking about that today in the shower again because this was this whole thing was on my mind. Yes. And I was like, okay, yes, you can get the same look for less, relatively the same look. You can get a similar look for less. Yeah. However. The way that it's constructed yes. and the way that they use and apply the fabrics, I mean, unquestionably, you, you can't you can't substitute. No, and just the way that it sits on you. Yeah. Like, it's, 
even with, so there's a company called Laurel Piana, and they are a sixth generation Italian company. Their cashmeres are woven on a loom, and they're almost, it's almost like a two in one. But the way that they apply their seams, it, you don't see any of the stitches, but it's all, like it's all seamlessly applied together. Yeah. I and get the visual here. And that, <laughs> I'm like, and, and it's hard for me to think this. I'm like, it's hard for me to describe because you, you literally don't see any top stitching okay. on the fabric. Yeah. Like it's all almost woven in on itself and it's like constructed together. And that's something you can't buy off the street. No. No. Um, and and that's, and the fit, you're paying for that fit, you're paying for the fabric, you're paying for the, like every yeah. construction, everything goes into it to make that garment so effortless. Um, and, and I've noticed, if you'll notice at coffee shops, when gentlemen sit down and they're wearing a well-tailored outfit, they can, they can get their coffee, they can sit down at a table and they can just read their paper or do whatever but then you have a gentleman that sits down and he doesn't have a tailored outfit or doesn't have an outfit that that cost him that much or or there wasn't the attention to detail put into it he'll always be pulling and fiddling yeah. at his outfit to yeah. adjust it to make it feel better on him and that's the difference Reduce. luxury gets you is that idea of just being like it's on me and i don't have to fuss with it at all yeah. because it fits me perfectly versus the guy that's always like tugging at his sleeve or adjusting yeah. his suit jacket or having to like keep pulling his collar up on his shirt. You become one with the you, garment. You become one with the garment. <laughs> and the garment becomes one with you. You are a seamless suit. Yeah. <laughs> just, and it just no, works I haven't found that one through yet. That was That's okay. we'll, I'll work on that. We'll work on that one. If we can, if we, if we uh, reminisce on the, right. the shoe is you, the you are the shoe. shoe. I'm excited for the shoes. Have you gotten them in yet? No, another couple of weeks. Oof. Yeah, it should be a week and a half ish, and then all of the pre orders will have come in, which is super exciting. And their shoe trees will be with it. And their shoe trees. With the gorgeous with little detail. Yes. Yes. And then yes. I've got an order in for my packwood shoes. So oh my, my packwood shoes are coming in here pretty soon for the I outfit. Have, the I fabric. Have outfit. We should have, can we, we can come dress shopping with you. Do I have to? No. <laughs> <laughs> I dra Ooh, going yikes. shopping with women <laughs> is such an emotional You're roller like, this coaster. Is thing. <laughs> My sister takes me shopping with her all the time, and she is such an indecisive person. And she she thinks she looks bad in pastel colors, but pastel colors look the best on her. Oh. And she just has this like set image of what she thinks she looks like in certain colors. And you're like, oh god. I'm gonna need another shot of espresso. Okay, it's just so like hard. What color palette? Like, what do you? Okay, you know me. Yeah. <laughs> you know me. Sure. <laughs> sure. sure. Do that. She doesn't even watch the week for wine. Sure do. <laughs> what what color palette would you say looks good on me? Like, what would you dress me in? You like your jewel tones. Just because you have the brown eyes, right? You like that pop of color that's really gonna be like, you walk into a room and there it is. I guess I need a picture of a hot pink dress, and you're like, no. What would you, would you ever do? I don't think I do orange. What is that color called? It's like. Orange is not me. It's like a, it's a, it's yellow, but it's a jewel tone, but it's got more of a, a greenish hue to it. What is that color called? Lavender? No, it's a lot more yellow. Like, like a pea green, like a, I'll show you off do you camera. Do you want me to Google it? Later, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a really unique color and it's, yeah. And it's not many women wear it because it's hard to pull off. But it's even oh. honestly for pocket. Like I'm trying to like even I'm st I'm not stuck on the color. It's I'm stuck on what silhouette that I want. Do I want like a fit and flare right to the knee? Do I want more of like a flowy mid calf? Like do I want a almost like a tank so that like I've got a little bit of cleavage? Do I want like a high neck halter? Like I don't know. I don't know what silhouette I want. Okay. And then, then I go on to like, do I want just like a small, elegant <laughs> fascinator? Do I want thing. like a big hat? Like, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm putting so much stress on to just a few hour event. I don't know how we're getting there. I'm probably going to have to be our designated driver. Probably. Because we're going to like the far north of the city. Uh, I'm telling you, like it, it's, 
it's a day and a half trek. It's not a day and a half, but it's just but it, yeah, it could Uber be. there. Yeah, no, I mean, you're gonna spend several hundred dollars on the Uber. Get but out it's here. past. It's past. Cross our mills. Like you're almost better getting like an Airbnb and an Airbnb for the night than Ubering <laughs> from there. Ew. Oh. <laughs> Those words just came out of my mouth. I'm so sorry. Did not mean to offend oh. anyone. For those in Airdrie, we're so sorry. <laughs> sorry for you. But how is your Uber game? <laughs> if it is, let me know. Because <laughs> I don't think there's any Airbnbs yeah. or hotels in Balzac. Oh my That's where God. it is. It's in Balzac. 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 What a crazy place. <laughs> Calm show. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, I mean, as much as yes. we've got on men's fashion, I would say. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, closing it out. Yeah. Closing it out. Um, the post that I sent you the other day about men's buttons versus women's buttons. Right. Just because, you know, it's un- unbuttoned the front. Okay. Um, it's interesting. I feel like a lot of people don't actually know that men's buttons and ladies' buttons on dress shirts are faced the opposite way. On everything, suits, dress yeah, shirts, it's, skirts, pants, uh, know, pants. No, pants, same thing. Like left over right. Left over right. Yeah, yeah. left over right. Yeah. Uh, no, but I was so I came across a post and it's just a thing I'm following and it's called "Shit You Should Know." And every day is just like a random fact and it's actually quite interesting. It's American based, um, just interesting kind of tidbits that they give out there. And okay. it was a whole post on. Uh, right buttons versus left buttons being female and male and what how far back it goes like it goes back to like napoleon days yeah where it was you know for the men's you know their their armor and having you know their 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 guns their swords their whatever it was and then you know how much still of a a gender bias it is of which way it goes right and well, you know, like so, who knew, right? Like so to give more in depth. Yeah, I know Kimberly's very vague on all of that. I was just, um, just but just men top soiling it. Top soiling it. That's my new term. <laughs> that, that's funny. Just a little top soil. No, uh, men's suiting, uh, men's jackets um, go left over right, um, and that's basically because men would always carry their swords on the left hand side because they were right handed. So to go into your jacket and pull out your sword was less of a fumble than to go, mm-hmm. you know, right over left or whatever. Left mm-hmm. over right, yeah. yeah. Um, and then women were the opposite because they often, I mean, men had ballets as well, um, but women had people that would dress them. So um, as a maid dressing, it was easier to dress yeah. right over left than left over right. So they would always button up and dress that way around, and it was easier for them um, to do that. And it was never, it never, I guess, it was always like that. <laughs> a new a new crew walking by. Sorry. A new evening crew. We have a full on that's a that's an expensive baby stroller they've got going yeah, there. Yeah. With no baby in it. That it's, like that. it's not Scandin- <laughs> it's not Scandinavia. No baby. No baby. <laughs> there is no baby on the sidewalk while Mama Bear is inside that's, the bakery. That's right. No, and so that's kinda how that worked out. Yeah. It was just the the reversal of and who would help you get dressed. And then men could dress themselves after uh, a night of um, brothelness yeah. and all that fun stuff and then women have to be helped into the corsets all the rest of it so do you find if you have a woman client right now do you still follow that is that still yes yeah um because it's typical um it's weird for a woman to dress the other way i once and i still have it um i was crafting a vest and i wasn't paying attention and i was starting to do the buttonholes mm-hmm. and i punctured the buttonholes on the wrong side of the vest and i was like well, we're just going to go with it. No yeah. one's ever going to notice which side my buttons are on. It bothers me because it's I'm left-handed to begin with. Yeah. And so the button the other way around, it just feels weird. So I'll always do the middle button up and leave the top open and then the bottom open. Because on a vest, you never do the bottom button up. Well, even on a jacket, you don't do the bottom button up. Right. Do you know why, though? Did we talk about this? I know this. Tell me, tell our viewers. I know this. Tell, 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 tell our tell, viewers. Tell the people. Tell the people. Why we never do our bottom button Why do up. not? This is a, this is the, the tips from. That's right. The tips from butts. Tips from butts. <laughs> we're going to have to work on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That one a little bit It's more. Monday, okay? Yeah. It's not my finest work. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we're, we're figuring the week out. It's only Monday. <laughs> no. So, and. It comes from, so back in the day when you have royalty, so the king would always go riding with his, his court. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And there, I don't know if it was a King Henry the Ninth, Eighth, Ninth, Thirteenth. I don't know. You could tell me anything, and I'm like, it oh, was a, a king of some sort. Yes. And he had gotten too portly to wear his clothing um, while he was sitting on a saddle. And so, when the king did something, the court also followed suit because if you didn't, it would be going against the court, and you'd mm-hmm. be shunned, and yeah. you'd lose your position. And also, your woman was, would lose her friends, and yeah. life would be oh difficult. I got, a, I got a story about the court too later on. Um, and so there, were, I guess, a, a king had gone out riding and he was uncomfortable, and so he unbuttoned the bottom button of his jacket, and the rest of the court had followed. Um, and to this day, men don't do up the very bottom button of their suit jacket because it's considered improper. It just, I think it looks so much neater, and it's not. It just has more of a, a yes. flair to it, which, I mean, if you're smart enough, you can do a one-button tuxedo jacket and really do yes. a farther cutaway in the jacket so it flares a little bit more. My biggest pet peeve, and I've seen it with uh, some cheaper garments, is where the button sits too high on the waist mm. and it flares too far too fast. And you see the bottom of, you base, it doesn't break at the waistline of the pants. And so you see the bottom of the shirt where it's tucked into the pants. Mm. And the shirt's always, like your dress shirt's always coming out no matter what. And yes. so it just looks frumpy, like it just becomes a point of interest. And you're like, yikes. Yeah. Whereas if that button just came down a little bit farther and your cutaway wasn't as dramatic, yeah. it looks good. Yeah. Like, it does look good. I mean, it's just like where where the tip of your tie hits. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. The tip of your tie. The tip of the tie. A lot of gentlemen, I don't care who you are. <laughs> we do not care. <laughs> <laughs> have a hard time with ties. Like, some ties end up looking real cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's nothing, I don't care how expensive your suit is, and mm-hmm. if you're not wearing a good tie with that suit, there's an issue. No. And so the tip of your tie should always come to the middle of your belt buckle. That just grazes it. Just grazes it. Grazes it. It's a great place to be. If it comes too short, it looks like your dad has tied your tie and you're off to church as an eight-year-old yeah. child. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't look Good. Yeah, like you tied it in a rushed effort in the parking lot of your Catholic high school, yeah. and you just don't know what you're doing. Yeah, and I mean, for for those, and most of my clients are of that upper VP level. If if you're working in upper leadership, if you're working in a, in a position of power, if you don't know how to dress, come on in. Yes. Like I will, I will pin down exactly what needs to be worked on, mm-hmm. how we can go about fixing it, and how to get you. An outfit that looks good because there's nothing worse than seeing a cheap tie on a gentleman with power. Yes. Like, and there's no shame in that. Like, no. Asking for help, how do you do things? Like, I mean, none of us just know this instinctively. Like, we all have to ask. Like, you know, you all have to. Well, if you're not taught it, how yeah, are you supposed to know? You have to learn how to dress for your body type. You have to learn the right length, the right everything. You just, and that's why you have experts. That's why you have people like you who, this is your craft. Right. This is what you know. Right. You know, like, it's not like you're just going to, like, wing it of, grinding down your teeth at home you go to the dentist you go to the expert they're going right. to teach you how to maintain certain or they things. Like should be teaching you yeah, if, they're, exactly. if they're good at what they do they should exactly. be teaching you it's how to dress it's just putting yourself out there in the best light and right. you know just something as simple like that it's 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 an easy fix there's right. no excuse for having the wrong length right you know like yeah. it's just or even even having a tie that's tied properly yes. and having it draped properly. Yes. Ties, I mean, we'll probably go into this in a later video. Like YouTube it. Learn how to tie your tie. Right. There's, there's different there's different knots. There's different yeah. Anyway, we'll, we will There's a way for it to look. We should and have an event of tie tying. An event of tie tying. Oh, tie-tying. I know so Kent of Inglewood and I found it so cute. Oh, um, this is so cute. It is so, so it's cute. a shaving place in Inglewood and it's called Kent 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 of Inglewood. And I mean, their people are so great because they're very old fashioned. They're very informative, but they have events on like on like Father's Day where they'll bring in like fathers and sons and they'll teach them both how to shave with yeah. like straight razors. If you don't know, I mean, if nobody's there to teach you, there's nothing right? wrong with learning. Like, no. don't put your pride aside. Like, ask questions. And I even thought about doing like an ironing event yes. where you teach guys how to iron your dress shirt because. Yes. A lot of guys hate doing it because they don't know how. You know how you like procrastinate doing something because you don't know yeah. how to do it well. Mm-hmm. Like getting guys in and doing an event of like pressing a dress shirt and this is what it should look like and different techniques for that. Yeah. We can do the same thing for ties. Like finding finding out what's good for a tie 
what goes into a tie, but even what your, to look your, for. your build, your shape, like that really affects it as well. Like someone yeah. who's like a, a, a body shape like you right. versus someone who's a bit more big bone, it's gonna be different. You yeah. gotta work with what you got. Right. And knowing and, how to do that, exactly. and just getting it right. right? It's, it's cool. It's kind of it's exciting, right? Yeah. Where it's cool, where you can really like work with what you've got, and it, again, it brings it back to exactly what I said before. It's not you're not fitting into something; you're making it fit you. Right. And and labels don't really matter in no. terms of sizing. No. Like if you're nope. an extra Numbers. large in a sweater, and nope. a large in an undershirt, or mm-hmm. like whatever it is, like those don't matter. What yeah. matters is how it looks on you, because no one's really. Caring about the tag. No, nobody sees the tag. No. Except for you. And even yeah. at that, it's throw and, them at the window. And there are women who buy, like, there are women who are so confident they go out and buy clothing that's two to three times bigger than what they normally wear, but the way that they style it, yeah, they know what they're doing. Yeah. And men's no different. Like, you can go out, um, and I know for me, I have a re- I'm really self conscious about my waistline. Like, okay. I, I don't like the muffin top when I'm wearing sweaters. Like, sweaters have a hard time with the ribbing at the bottom. Yes. Where it just always looks muffin toppy. And for me, that drives me up the wall because I've tried so hard to get my waist down and yeah. keep it at a point where it doesn't look big. But whenever I wear sweaters, it just balloons and does what it's supposed to do. I just don't like the way it looks. So yeah. I always go a size down in sweaters and try to tuck them in as much as possible to streamline that look. Yeah where it's clean and crisp, but it still allows me to layer a little bit versus wearing it outside of the pants and allowing it to balloon and just move in a weird way. Yeah. So it's just about styling and learning how to style properly. Exactly. And if you don't try, you don't know. And if you don't try, you don't know. That's right. That's it. And every brand is different. Yeah. So, I mean... And when... different fabrics fit, feel different and yeah. like lay on you differently. Yeah. Thicker fabrics versus the thinner summer fabrics will mm-hmm. all play a huge role and the way that the arms are cut, whether you have a raglan sleeve or a built-in shoulder, um, it all it all depends. So you really do have to get out there and just, as much as you may hate it, get out there and try things on and have someone guide you through it. So if you have a friend that enjoys your company, go out with them and try things on together and compliment each other on okay, what you, you're trying you on. You won't do that with me for a dress or pack one. <laughs> okay. Well, you have female friends that can go with that. Let me just tell you That's right okay. now. I will go with you. No, it's I have fine. no issue going with you. You know that. But anyway. Well, that's that. Yeah. That's I'll that. let you talk us out while I um, weirdly make a transition from my seat to the camera to turn this sucker off because I don't. There's no clicker. There's no clicker for this. It's it's all manual yeah. here. I, I mean, we've got the spoke. Fancy mic. We got. I, I really want to get, like, the Larry King-style mic that sits here. You should. Yeah. This is just, like, going on with, like, my whole vision that we're going to have, like, a podcast or some sort of, like, a vlog. But we consider this, like, a vlog style. Is this kind of vlogging? This is vloggy. Is this vloggy? Vloggy. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, a do... really, like, good, like, heavy microphone, and we're, like, just chit-chatting. Yeah. But the microphone can sit down here and not up here. Yeah. That's what I mean, like, on, <laughs> on the table, and we just chat. And, yeah. You know, it's a good time. But... Yeah. You know, and again, you know, as always, um, bespoke by butts yeah, here in the back Instagram. room of stuff. Come on in, see Calvin. He is so welcoming, so friendly. We'll give you any advice. Just chit chat and uh, bespoke by butts on Instagram. Have a good night. <laughs>